Good morning, Purity family. Uh, good morning to our Facebook campus. Good morning to our conference call. Uh, and good morning to all of you all who are present here with me this morning. Uh, we are here blessed with another day by our Lord and Savior. Uh, so that's something indeed that we should be thankful for. Uh, and uh, I'll be bringing you the Sunday school lesson uh, this morning, uh, <clears throat> uh, titled uh, Welcoming, Welcoming Invitation, a welcoming invitation taken out of uh, Revelation chapter 22, verses, 20, um, verses 10 through 21. Uh, Of course, uh, I know you're all expecting Deacon Whitehead, uh, but this is Deacon Watson uh, filling in for Deacon Whitehead. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm gonna do my best to do just a, as fine a job as she normally does on the fourth Sunday. Uh, and the good thing, if I don't do a good job, then I have another chance to next week for the first Sunday, because that's my normal turn. Uh, so. Uh, you all just uh, pray for me as I uh, navigate through this lesson this morning. Uh, actually, it's a very exciting lesson, uh, as they all are. Uh, but this one is especially exciting uh, uh, because uh, this is John's final proclamation of uh, the vision that he saw. Uh, and for those who are uh, uh, seeking their salvation, it's a good proclamation. For those who are still deciding to go their own way, the news is not so good for you. Okay, so uh, let me just open up with a word of prayer. Kind Heavenly Father, once again, we come before you just to say thank you, Lord. Uh, first of all, Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to get up this morning, Father, clothing our right mind, Father. Uh, you, you. Uh, provided a roof over our heads and uh, you put shoes on our feet and, and gave us something to eat this morning. So I just thank you, Lord, for that. Father, uh, I ask you this morning, Father, just to uh, uh, be with the teacher this morning as uh, I bring forth uh, your lesson uh, from the final chapter of Rev the book of Revelation, Father. Father, just uh, uh, guide me and lead me along the way. Uh, uh, Take, my, take me out of uh, uh, this lesson for, uh, I'm not here for any show of fashion, Father, I'm just here to, to help the class uh, get a better understanding uh, of what your word says, Father. Uh, Father, so just be with me, Father. Father, we ask you to bless our pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. Robin A. Toogood, Father, uh, as he continues uh, to uh, relax uh, on his vacation, Father, we pray that uh, you put your loving arms of protection around him wherever he might be, Father. We ask you to bless our congregation this morning, Father. Uh, bless this loving congregation. And then, Father, we ask you just to bless uh, uh, all of your children, Father, wherever. Uh, so, a welcoming invitation. Uh, and we know through our uh, studies in Sunday school, uh, we, we always have an invitation. Uh, uh, and, and we're charged to, uh, to accept that invitation. And we also charge that once we accept that invitation, we are just not gonna hold all the good news to ourselves uh, because uh, there's more work to do. And our work is once we accept uh, the invitation from Christ, uh, we need to pass it on and invite others uh, to, to uh, and come in and see the good news. And the only way that we can do that is sharing what we learn. And so that's why we're here today, uh, to share, uh, to learn. Then once we learn, we go out and share. Uh, uh, the story don't end, you know, once we walk out the door as a purity. Uh, the, the story continues. So that's why we're here today. 
Uh, so with that said, I'll go ahead and uh, read our verses for the morning uh, uh, from Revelation uh, chapter 22, starting at verse 10. Uh, it, it says, and he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And the verses uh, 12 and 13, this is Jesus actually speaking. It says, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Uh, verse 14 says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have, right, have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Uh, for, without all, for without our dogs and sorcerers, whoremongers and murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Uh, verse 16, we find Jesus speaking once again. He says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. Verse 17 says, uh, And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that hear it say, Come, and let him that a thirst Come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. And our focal verses for this morning, verses 18 and 19 says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Uh, 19 says, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in the book. Uh, verse 20 says, he which testified these things said, and once again, this is Jesus speaking, surely I come quickly, amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus, and our final verse reads, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. 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 Uh, so, uh, as we've been uh, studying uh, the book of Revelation uh, these past few weeks, the book of Revelation reveals that John saw in a vision while he was isolated on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, uh, he was in prison for preaching the gospel. And John introduces us to the river of life, uh, the tree of life, and the blessings that both provide to the believers who inhabit uh, the New Jerusalem. Uh, he writes that believers will see God's face and they will carry his name and his mark of identification uh, on their foreheads. Uh, now Jesus then told John that everything he had seen in his vision was true and faithful, because we know that God cannot lie. He's not gonna lie to you. He's gonna give it to you straight, okay? Whereas we know man, uh, man can be devious and, and he'll uh, try to change the word to suit what he wants. Uh, but uh, as, as you saw in the verse, it said you, you're not supposed to change God's word. Not supposed to add to it or subtract from it. Okay. Uh, and, and verses 8 and 9 tell us that John uh, uh, attempted to bow before the angel who was delivering the message to him, uh, and who was showing him the new, Jer the new Jerusalem. But the angel told John not to bow to him because he didn't deserve the worship. Uh, who deserved the worship? Uh, the angel told John that he needed to worship God. That's who deserves the worship. Uh, so uh, as we move into the lesson, uh, in this week's lesson, Jesus declared himself to be Alpha and Omega. Uh, uh, citing the span between the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet to symbolize that 
He is sovereign over all things that he uh, is complete within himself. Uh, and and he, he needs nothing from any other sources. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we know that he's part of the, uh, uh, the God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so he, he has all he needs already. Uh, he don't need us to help him. Uh, he's here to help us. Uh, and now Jesus uh, has always ex existed, but uh, he created time and came as our savior. And someday he will end time as we know it. Uh, he is the beginning of all things and the end of all things. And when he returns, he will bring rewards with him. Uh, and as we look at lesson, uh, the verse 10, the angel directed John to leave the book of the prophecy open so that it could be read by all. Uh, God does not allow the words of the prophecy of this book to be closed to mankind. Uh, by leaving the book open, God is calling everyone to be a witness to the declarations that are in the book. Uh, and that's for you and I. Uh, I mean, what good it would, would it be for me to sit here and read this lesson and then close my notes up so nobody else has access to them. What good is the Bible gonna be if, if we read the Bible and we close it and, and we say, no, you can't read this. Uh, no, God wants us to read it. Uh, uh, we, we hear many preachers say, if you don't believe me, read it for yourself. You can't read it for yourself if you keep the book closed, okay? You don't have x-ray vision. In order to read that book, you got to open it up, okay? And, and uh, it, it, you know, there, there's so many different Bibles out there that you can open. And so we have no excuse, you know, that, that you know, hey, the book is not open, you know. Uh, you can't even say, I don't know what page to turn to. Turn to any page. Any page in that Bible will give you a good message give you good instruction, okay? Um, verse 11 indicates the effect of, of our book of Revelation. Uh, and now, by being kept open after reading the prophecy of the book, those who are still unjust, uh, John said, should remain unjust. Uh, uh, those who are still filthy should remain filthy. Uh, but then the prophecy further confirmed uh, and strengthen and sanctify those who are righteous with God and who are holy. Uh, so it says, for everyone who reads the prophecy of Revelation, it will be a savior uh, to, to some. And those who, who don't read it or even read it and don't believe it, it, it becomes a death sentence. Uh, so, and we know that the wages of sin is death. Uh, verse 12, uh, once the end of time events start, Jesus will come quickly, taking everyone by surprise. We don't know when he's coming. So that tells us we got to be ready. We got to be ready. Okay. We can't wait till the day that he appears and say, oh, uh, give, me, give me five minutes, Jesus. Uh, let, let me get ready. No. We, we're supposed to be getting ready day by day, hour by hour. Minute by minute, second by second, okay? Uh, uh, and, and, and Jesus uh, uh, says that when he returns, uh, he says, my reward is with me to give every man according to uh, his work shall be. And, and now the word reward means uh, whatever is due, okay? If you do good things, <laughs> you're gonna get do good things. If you do bad things, you're gonna get bad things. You know, whatever you do, okay? Um, so, uh, of course, this means that Jesus' reward can be either favorable or unfavorable. Uh, Jesus will deal with every person according to his, uh, their deeds uh, or the things they have done concerning others. Uh, uh, those who have been changed by faith in Jesus will be rewarded and those still bound in sin and unbelief will suffer his judgment in the lake of fire and brimstone. Uh, now the life that believers live, uh, we have to remember, is not just for 
us to enjoy. Uh, we're here for a purpose. Uh, we're here to serve God and to serve others. Uh, you, you, if you remember in Luke uh, chapter 10, uh, verses 25 to 28, you remember a young lawyer asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus asked him, what does the law say? And the lawyer answered saying, thou shalt love uh, the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy man, mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Uh, uh, Jesus doesn't make it difficult for us to understand. Uh, uh, the words that he give us are right to the point. You know, he, he doesn't, you don't see any big words that, that, uh, that you have to go to the dictionary and look, look, look up. Uh, he makes it plain. And, and as he makes it plain, when we're uh, trying to bring others to Christ, we need to make it plain also. Uh, uh, we, we need to maybe share some of our testimony of, of you know, why we have come to Christ. Uh, uh, you, you, you never know, your testimony will help someone else. Uh, uh, in verse 14, those who obey God's commandments are not only going to be blessed, but they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Uh, now, the word right means you have authority or privilege. Uh, uh, and, and who gives you that right? Uh, your God gives you that right. Okay? Uh, now, because of the blood of Jesus, uh, the redeemed of all ages will have authority to enter the holy city of the new Jerusalem through the 12 open gates. Uh, according to Revelations 22 and 2, the tree of life is in the middle of Jerusalem on both sides of the river of life. Uh, 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 <clears throat> excuse me. The tree of life is in the middle of New Jerusalem on both sides of the river of life. And it bears a different fruit uh, in each, uh, for each of the 12 months. Uh, now the redeemed will also have access to all the benefits and health giving properties of this tree of life. Uh, we, don't, we won't need any more doctors. That, that's good news, you know, no, no sickness. Okay, uh, tree of life. Uh, uh, now, uh, now, by verse 15, uh, it says, without all, uh, the, 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 I'll put it this way, those excluded will be the dogs and sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Now, these people are left outside of the 12 gates. Uh, now, the term dogs is a classification by John as a symbol of uncleanliness and impurity. Uh, dog can also refer to a male prostitute. Uh, uh, those who, uh, and that would include those who mock Jesus as his crucifixion, because you know he was mocked, okay? Uh, and those who uh, were enemies of David or, or the greedy watchman. Uh, now, in his letter to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul referred to evildoers and those who taught uh, Judaism as dogs. Now, sorcerers were also those who uh, practiced magic by using drugs, uh, spells, and witchcraft. Uh, and, and so, I mean, these descriptions are very simple. Uh, and as I say, you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, you can just uh, open a Sunday school book. Actually, it re has it real clear for you. Re read it for yourself. Uh, now, although we use the word murderers to refer to those who purposely take somebody's life, the Bible also says that the attitude of hatred is murder. You know, if you have the thought in your mind, you know, you're a murderer. And, 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 and the, the murderer, uh, you know, will have no eternal life. Uh, 
as we move to uh, verse 16. Uh, we move to verse 16. Uh, the words, I, Jesus, reveal that the Lord himself is once again speaking and expressing his authority. Uh, Jesus was saying that he sent his angel, uh, the one who was showing jo jo John around the New Jerusalem. And, and he said, uh, this is a message to tell the churches all the things that, uh, that John is discovering. Uh, now, in the words, these things include everything that John had witnessed in his vision. Jesus also said, I am the root and the offspring of David. Uh, now, when Jesus said he's the root, you got to remember, Jesus is God. Okay? So he's the root. He created David. But when G uh, Jesus came down in his human form, uh, he just wanted to be clear uh, because <coughs> that, that, uh, that he, he was... The root, okay, he created David, but he had another role in that, you know, he's following David, okay? Uh, so, so he's the heir to the, drone, to the throne in the human form. But we already know that he was already an heir because he, he was part of God, okay? Okay. Uh, the Lord also referred to himself as the bright and morning star. Now the morning star is the brightest star at the darkest time of night. And according to uh, astronomy, it signals a new day. So Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament hope of, of a Messiah. And he came at a dark period of Israel's history. Okay. Uh, he also uh, is going to return at the darkest moment of uh, human history, because we know that when he comes in the New Jerusalem, it's not going to be any nighttime, okay? The bright morning star. One thing I like about uh, uh, when, when, I, when I cruise, I, I get up early in the morning, uh, and, and I go sit out on, on the balcony, and I, I'm just sitting here watching this, the sun come up, you know? Uh, I mean, because it's real dark at first, it's got an orange color. And then it just gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And, and, you know, I sit there and I say to myself, look at the work of God. You know, I mean, it's just, if you all ever check my page if I, after I come off a cruise, one of the first pictures you see is the sun, sun rising. You know, uh, because it's so beautiful. Just, just to sit out there and watch uh, what God created. Uh, in verse 17, uh, uh, 17 is an invitation to those who need salvation. We all need salvation. Uh, now, there are two inv invitations given. Uh, the first invitation is the Spirit, is by the Spirit and the Bride. Uh, and they say, come. Now, the Spirit refers to the Holy Spirit. And, and the Bride refers to the church. Uh, and together, they offer an invitation uh, Christ come, please come, okay? Uh, now, anyone who has responded to the Spirit's call and became a member of the body of Christ must now extend the invitation to others. As I said in the beginning, you, you can't keep it all to yourself. Uh, it, it's given to you so that the word can continue uh, uh, to, to, to be transformed to others. Uh, so we don't hold the word to ourselves. Uh, once we receive the word, we give everybody else that we can the good news. It's up to them to accept it or, or reject it. But our responsibility is to share it. Uh, the second invitation is to come. To come is given uh, by those who hear the word. So once we have giving the word to somebody else, uh, now they have that responsibility that we had, you know, is they, they hear the word and now they're supposed to share the word also. And that's how the gospel is spread. Uh, you know, just think what would have happened if, uh, if no one had ever spread any of this gospel to us, where would we be? Uh, in 18, the revel uh, 
as, a re as Revelation comes to a close, there's a strong warning not to uh, tamper with the messages revealed by John. The warning not to tamper with messages of the book is addressed to anyone that heareth the word of the prophecy in the book. The warning is that any man sh shall add uh, unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. Uh, uh, there are similar warnings given elsewhere uh, in, in the Bible. Uh, now, uh, while it's a bad thing to change any part of God's word, this particular warning is especially for the words of revelation. Anyone who will add unto these word things, God shall add unto him the plagues. Uh, and the plagues refer to here are pr uh, probably those that are mentioned in Revelations in chapter eight and nine, and also chapter 16. Uh, now in uh, verse 19, just as there's a warning against anyone who adds to the prophecy of Revelation, there's also a warning to anyone who shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. Anyone who takes anything away from the message of Revelation removes their chance for a place in the book of life. Uh, they, they ruin their chance for a place in the holy city. And all the promises and privileges that are written in the book. Uh, so uh, uh, if you take away you, you, you're hurting yourself. You're hurting your chances of, of, of being able to see God one day, face to face. Uh, in verse 20, he which testified these things uh, is Jesus Christ, uh, who is elsewhere uh, called the faithful witness. Uh, Christ is the faithful witness. Now, in the beginning of this book, what is written in it said, it's said to be the uh, testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, even though the angels brought their revelation to John, ultimately it is Jesus' message that they share. Uh, Jesus can vouch for the message in the book because he is the faithful and true one. Uh, as the one who testifies or witness to these things written in Revelation, Jesus declared, surely I come quickly. Uh, now his coming will be completely unexpected and sudden. We don't know when he's coming. That's why I said again, well, you gotta be ready. You gotta get ready daily. You can't say, well, tomorrow I'm gonna get ready. Tomorrow might be that day. Okay, so while, I mean, as you're sitting now, you, you, you should be getting ready. We all should be getting ready. Uh, in response to Jesus' words, surely I come quickly, John answered with a short prayer saying, amen. Amen. Now, now you know, I, 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 thought, I always thought of amen mean uh, I acknowledge that what is said is true. But John used it as a prayer. He just said, amen. Now, even so, come, Lord, John uh, asked the Lord. Now, amen is a term to show agreement that what is said is the truth. When John said amen, he was agreeing with the Lord's promise to come quickly. John also said, even so, come, Lord Jesus, indicating that he was hoping that Jesus would return soon. Okay. Uh, in our final verse, uh, it says, the grace of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. John's last words to the readers are a benediction. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's fitting that John declared the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ upon his readers because it's uh, only by his grace, uh, 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 the unarmed favor, that anyone can escape the eternal doom of the lake of fire and brimstone and enter into eternal the eternal new Jerusalem that Jesus has prepared for us. Uh, in conclusion, uh, whether people believe it or not, the eternal Son of God is coming again to take us to spend eternity with him. Uh, his first coming was as a babe uh, during the Advent season. He came to save the world by uh, dying for our sins. 
Uh, now in Revelation, this is Christ's second coming. So the appropriate response, the appropriate response for us is to worship Jesus Christ as Alpha and Omega, as well as the one who is coming back for us someday. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. In Jesus Christ, there is joy, blessing, hope, and peace. Uh, we also have the abiding assurance that there is a purpose to everything. The one who purposed everything is the eternal sovereign God, Alpha and Omega. And that, uh, that ends our lesson for this morning. Uh, next week's lesson, uh, we start a new Sunday school book. Uh, uh, the lesson uh, next week is titled The Call of Abraham, taken from Genesis chapter uh, 12, verses 1 through 5, and verse 7, and Genesis 15, verses 1 through 7. Uh, kind Heavenly Father, once again, uh, I thank you, Father, for uh, letting me teach this class this morning, Father. We ask you just to be with uh, Reverend uh, Geneva Logan as she uh, brings forth your word this morning and leads us in our morning worship, Father. Father, we ask you to bless all uh, Puritans and bless all churches, Father. All these blessings I ask in the name of your loving son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise because he's worthy to be praised. I said he's worthy to be praised. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. Good morning, uh, Sanctuary Facebook campus conference called. I bring you greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Let us go to God in prayer. Amen. Amen. Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, lifting you up, magnifying your holy name. We want to say thank you because this is the day that you have made and we are rejoicing and we are so grateful to be in it for we know that it could have been the other way. And for that, we say thank you. We say thank you for bringing us back to Purity Baptist Church just to lift up the mighty name of Jesus one more time. Oh, hallelujah. We love you. We praise you. God, touch our pastor right now, Father God, wherever he may be, Lord God. Please continue to pr protect him. Keep your angels encamped all around him. Allow no hurt, harm, or danger to come to him. Father God, I ask you right now to touch those who are homebound, Father God, those who are in the hospitals, those who are dealing with uh, different things, Lord God. Just touch like only you can. Father God, we love you and we praise you. We lift you up and magnify your holy name because you're worthy to be praised. I said you're worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, man. Hallelujah. The trio. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're going to ask everyone to join us uh, as we sing uh, hymn number 162, Pass Me Not. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Mm -hmm. 
Sing one time. Say, say, hear my humble cry. While on earth is thou a calling, do not pass me. Last time, last time, I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Yeah. 
bless me he bow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. Glad I got a friend down in my heart. Glad I got a friend this morning down in my heart. Glad I got a friend down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. Glad I got peace down in my heart. Glad I got peace down in my heart. Glad I got peace down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my heart. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. Anybody got Jesus? Everybody got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. If you got Jesus, if you got Jesus, clap your hands. Clap your hands now. If you got Jesus, if you got Jesus, stomp your feet. I got Jesus. Oh, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. Oh, I got Jesus. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. Oh, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. Oh, I got Jesus. He's a good doctor. Oh, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. Oh, I got Jesus. He's a mighty good friend. Oh, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. Oh, I got Jesus. I got the Holy Ghost. I got Jesus, 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 I got got I got Jesus, I got Jesus, I I 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 I I got Jesus. I, I, I got Jesus. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus in my Hearts. Amen. How many of you glad that you got Jesus down in your heart? Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. I got Jesus down in my heart. Whew, there's no other place we need him. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you are glad that you're here this morning? How many of you are glad that you're here this morning? How many of you are glad that he woke you up this morning, started you on your way, clothed in your right frame of mind? Hallelujah. We got Jesus down in our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord one more time? There's no other place that I or you rather be than in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. At this time, we're going to have our morning prayer led to us this morning. Mm. 
Okay. Don't everyone look at me at one time, right? Deacon Connie Smith. She knew it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Yes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine diseases. Redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Father, we come before your presence this morning to acknowledge that you are the true and living God. You are Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Yes. True and living God, the yes. Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It was you who sent the Holy Spirit to be in those who believe in Jesus. Yes. And we are grateful to know that we are part of that company of believers who know that Jesus is your son. Believing we do have eternal life. Oh, guys, we shared in the, in the Sunday school lesson this morning about the new Jerusalem. There is coming the day <laughs> when we will be caught up to meet him in the air and we'll forever be with the Lord. We're grateful, Father, for this opportunity that we have to come together as a part of the body of Christ. Believers who thank you for this new day which you've made we're rejoicing even already and glad in it. We thank you for your love, your kindness, and your tender mercies. For truly, your mercies are new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. Oh God, man tells lies, but we know that you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. And we thank you for how you continue to keep us, to love on us, for your grace and mercy has brought, is bringing us through. I thank you for our church family. I lift our pastor, your servant, Robin Anthony Too Good II, to you this morning. Oh God, we thank you so much for him, for the life that he lives before you, before us. <laughs> oh God, the one who knows that you love his soul and He's been appointed at this time in all of our lives to be the under-shepherd of this place, the Purity Baptist Church. And he is determined, oh God, and we thank you for this time of respite that you're giving him. He know that, oh God, the person who has been assigned to, uh, appointed to bring forth your word today will break the bread of life. One who loves you, your servant, Reverend Geneva Logan, I lift her to you this morning. Thank you. Thank Pray you. even now, God, that you've already given the word that you would have for your people today. For only you know what each of us need. <laughs> I pray that you would anoint him, her especially as she stands boldly making that proclamation. For all who sit in this company in the building today, but we know that there are those on the airwaves who are a part of the body of Christ that you would help us, Lord, to endure these dark and evil days that we see. The word tells us that in the last days there would be wars and rumors of wars. Oh God, we're witnessing it all now. Man's inhumanity to man. Man who loves self more than lovers of God. But we're gonna stand firm, believing and knowing that we are your children. And Jesus, you said that those who the Father gives me, no man can pluck out of our hands, or of his hands. So we know that we're safe. For all of our church family who are on vacations and traveling, I pray that you would continue to strengthen and encourage them. Keep them safe as they come back. We're reminded that a school has, some schools have opened and others are coming to open. We pray, oh God, for the school systems all over the nation for the children who yes, will yes, yes. go back on Monday, let them not be fearful. I pray for the teachers and those in administration, 
all who will have a part in the learning experience of our children this year. You know all about them. And we pray for the homes that they represent too, for the mothers and fathers and oh, other grandparents and whoever has been assigned to look after them, strengthen and encourage them. Oh God, let us not grow weary in, in doing that which is right. Again, Father, I just love you and thank you for all you've done and are doing, that we will continue to be obedient to your word. We're reminded, we're reminded, oh God, we need to pray. We also need to open up the word of scripture and ask the Holy Spirit to help us and illumine our minds as to what it is you would share with us. But we're reminded to stay connected to the vine. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, and ask what you will and it will be done unto you. We are grateful again for this opportunity that we'll have to share today. Guide us and keep us ever looking to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame. He sits there at your right hand, interceding on our behalf. We honor you, we bless you, we praise you, we adore you, we magnify your holy name. Oh, hallelujah, we love you, Lord. Can't do anything without you, we love you, Lord. Bless us and keep us, oh God, we would let our light so shine that others can see our good work and glorify you, our Father in heaven. In Jesus' name I do pray, amen, 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 hallelujah. I thought that number one would truly be me. I thought I could be what I wanted to be. I thought that I could build on life sinking sand, but I realize I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I thought that I could do a lot on my own. Oh, and I thought yes, sir. of myself as a mighty big man. I thought I could do a lot on, on my own, but I realize I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Whoa, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. You know the mountains are so high and the valleys are so wide and I'm down on my knees where I had to say Lord I can't even walk without you holding my hand oh, I can't even walk without you holding my hand these are my 
mountains are so high in the valley. The valley. Oh, they are so wide. And I'm down on my knees where I have to say I can even walk. Lord have mercy, y'all. I can even walk. I need you, Lord. I can't even walk, Lord, take my hand. I can't even walk, I can't make it on my own. I can't even walk. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Awesome, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Mm. Ooh, Jesus. Church, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you men for that selection. And thank you Deacon Smith for standing in the gap. Truly appreciate it, amen. My Bible says be ye also ready. Yes, <laughs> Amen, amen. Um, at this time, it's now time for our offering. We're going to ask right now that our ushers prepare for our offering and that you may give. Our ushers will come down. For those who are on Facebook and conference call or in the sanctuary, you may text to give by texting 73256, then PBCUC. Deacon Minnick is agreeing with me. It's 73256, then uh, put in PBCUC. UC. PBC UC. 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 Amen. Amen. Let's help our men out. Amen. We're going to do another. So it's on. All right. All right. I'm going where the wicked shall cease their troubling, and the weary shall be at rest. All of the saints of the ages. Gonna sit at his feet and be breath. The wicked shall cease from troubling, and the weary shall be at rest. All of the saints of the ages gonna sit at his feet and be blessed. I'm, I'm a stranger down here. This old world is not my home. You're gonna get up looking for me one morning, but thank God I'll be gone on home. Yes, the wicked shall cease from troubling. The weary, the weary shall rest. All of the saints of the ages gonna sit at His feet and be blessed. Now, 
I, I don't mind a few lies been told on me. And I don't mind being viewed and scorned. Cause every time someone tells a lie on me, it's another brick in my brand new home. Well, the weekend shall cease from troubling and the weary. Yes, all the saints, all of the saints of the ages, gonna sit at his feet and be blessed. Now, if you should ever come to my home, and when you got there, they tell you that Clinton's gone. Come on, come on over the river. You find me somewhere around the throng. Yes, I said the weak at Chelsea from troubling and the weary. The weary shall be at rest. All of the same group of the ages. Gonna sit at his feet and be blessed. Yeah, said the wicked shall see from troubling. Yes, sir. and the weary. Yes, it will. Mm-hmm. All of the saints, who oh, of the ages, gonna sit at his feet and be blessed. Gonna sit at his feet and be blessed. They're gonna sit at his feet and be blessed. They're gonna sit at his feet and be blessed. Amen. Amen. We thank you for your tithes and your offerings. Amen. Amen. Are we ready, my ministry? And Deacon Protein Alex is. Amen. We will now hear from our mind ministry. And I would like to say at this time, thank you, men, for leading us in our praise and worship this morning. Let's give them a hand clap of praise. Amen. Don't be. <laughs> Amen.
ministry. Thank you. Amen. Amen. What a blessing this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the great things he has done and he's doing. Amen. And he will be doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. First, giving honor to God, who is truly the head of my life. My pastor, the Reverend Dr. Robin A. Tugut, the second in his absence. Officers, members, and friends. Facebook campus and conference call. I bring you greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For it is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I said it is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. For we know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? I said if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would I be? Where would we be? I'm excited and delighted to be standing up here this morning to lift up the mighty name of Jesus one more time. I would like to say uh, to my pastor, thank you for entrusting me once again to bring forth the word of God to his people and for all people. Amen? Oh boy, hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm not going to be before you long this morning. Uh, Deacon Watson uh, said, how long do I need? So... Uh, <laughs> Oh, so we'll be here till one. <laughs> so cancel your 12 o'clock brunch. <laughs> All right. He said he has time this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. So if you have your Bibles, would you please turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew? Please stand. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 21 and just one verse, verse 22. Uh, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21 and verse 22, one verse. And when you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads, In all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Let us pray. Father, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, lifting you up, magnifying your holy name. Father God, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for bringing us back to lift up the mighty name of Jesus one more time. Father God, it's because of your grace and your mercy, Father God, we are here to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. I ask you right now, God, to take self out of this, Father God. Usher your Holy Ghost presence in it, Father God. Father God, let me preach with boldness and clarity, Father God. Where someone will come running, what must I do to be saved, Father God? I ask you to open up our hearts and our minds so that we may hear a word from you because there is a word from the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I want to use, I thought about it, and I want to use as my subject this morning, if you only believe. If you only believe. I want to ask you this morning, how many of you believe that whatsoever you ask in prayer and believing that ye shall receive? My Bible tells me that we have not because what? We ask not. I know that some of you may be going through something in your life and you have asked the Lord to deliver you out of your trials, your situation, and your mess. And he hasn't answered your prayers just yet. The key word here is yet. But I came to tell you this morning to hold on just a little while longer because if you believe in your heart and understand that God's time is not our time and his ways are not our ways, that he will make a way. I said that he will make a way and that he will make a way out of no way. I know that some of you may be saying that I don't believe it or that I'm talking foolishness, but I'm here to tell you this morning, I 
am a witness that if you hold on just a little while longer, you're asking God for something will come to fruition, but you just have to hold on because your waiting is not in vain. And no, I'm not talking foolishness, but I do know that if I put my trust in the Lord, that he will make it all right. I know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I know that when things are looking pretty tough, we have to look to the hills from which cometh our help, our help coming from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Do I have a witness this morning? I realize that sometimes God may not come when you want him, but one thing I can attest to, that he is right on time. Isn't he on time, church? I said, isn't he on time? Because we know that he is an on-time God. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that when you pray, you have to simply rely on God? For he is the one who knows all and sees all. It's not your friends, it's not your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, or your grandparents. It is the Lord. Yes, somebody prayed for you. Hallelujah. But it comes down to the Lord who will be answering your prayers. Do I have a witness this morning? If you only believe. Hallelujah. He is the one who really knows what you need before we need it and pray. Sometimes I say to God, why am I praying to you again, Lord? Because you already know my needs. Then I will think about what I just said and say, Lord, please forgive me because I know that we ought to pray without ceasing. Do I have a witness? Hallelujah. If you want your breakthrough, you're going to have to stop, drop, and pray to the Lord for your answer. We have to believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Lord, forgive me for trying to use you. You see, people, prayer, it enables the mind of God to, to, to flow through our minds. Philippians 2, 5 says what? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So when two, when two people talk, their minds do what? They merge. No person is exactly the same after talking to one another. Communication between individuals causes a merging of the minds that is impossible to prevent. Church, we often, let me say this, we often depend on our own skills and abilities when life seems easy, but we turn to God when we feel unable to help ourselves. Do I have a witness? How many of you can identify with what I'm saying this morning? If you can identify with me, say amen. If you can identify with me, give God some praise. You see, church, God is our source of power, and we receive his help by keeping in touch with him, and that is through prayer and thanksgiving. So what I just said was, you can't have power if you don't keep in touch with the Lord. How many of you want power this morning? How many of you want that Holy Ghost power this morning? Oh, bless the name of the Lord, church. I feel good this morning, and I hope you do too. But I just stopped by this morning to let you know that if you pray and put your trust in the Lord, that he will, I said he will, he will make a way out of no way. <laughs> I want you to know that God pays attention to those who call on him. Uh, my Bible tells me to seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Oh yes, church, God is out there and he is waiting on you, 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 and you. 
Whether God offers uh, escape from trouble or help in times of trouble, we can be certain that he always hears and acts on behalf of those who love him. Church, there is no doubt that God doesn't love us because he died for us. Amen? The question really is, do you love him enough and trust and believe that he will answer your prayers and bring you through? I'm excited this morning because in spite of all the hurdles and obstacles I had to face and overcome, my God was there with me all the way. I'm glad to know that my God is not a coward God. I'm glad to know that the God we serve, the one that sits high and looks low, the one who will fight your battles if you just keep still, because I know that when I'm in trouble, he will what? He will hide me. Oh, hallelujah. I know that when I am sad, he makes me glad. Why? Because he's my friend. He's your friend, your friend and your friend. Oh, yes, church. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy and all. He gives us strength from day to day. No doubt about it. Without him, we would all fall. Oh, bless the name of the Lord, church. You see, it doesn't matter, hallelujah, what your circumstances are. You have to continue believing, praying, and trusting in the Lord. You have to continue believing because he will bring you out if you only believe. If he brought you to it, he most certainly will bring you through it. Do I have a witness? You see, like I said before, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. I know if I continue praying and trusting in him, he will take care of me. Like the songwriter wrote, be not dismayed, whatever be tired, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. So I'm going to keep on praying to the Lord because his son Jesus was beaten, bruised, and died for me. He died for you so that we could have a right to, to this tree of life. Aren't you glad about it this morning? I'm going to keep on praying to the Lord because he paid it all. I know that Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Aren't you glad this morning that we have a forgiving God? I said, aren't you glad this morning that we have a forgiving God? Someone who looks beyond our faults and knows and supplies every last one of our needs. Aren't you glad this morning that the Lord is your light and your salvation? Whom shall you fear? The Lord is the strength of your life. Of whom shall you be afraid? There comes a time in your life when you must stop running. You must stand still and know that you know that he is God. You must stand on the promises because when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, what? We shall prevail. We must stand uh, on the promises of God. Oh, come on, church. Uh, oh, bless the Lord at all times. Uh, because no matter huh, what you think of me, uh, I'm going to keep on praying and trusting in the Lord. Uh, because when I was in trouble, Jesus dropped the charges uh, and the case was dismissed. Uh, I'm going to keep on praying to the Lord because even though I cry at night, I know that his son Jesus wept. I know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, I said joy, I said joy, that unspeakable joy will come in the morning. Do I have a witness? We all got to cry sometime. Oh, hallelujah. I call those cleansing tears, hallelujah. Jesus will wipe those tears away. I'm going to keep on praying to the Lord because when my enemies huh, 
come up against me, I know that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. I know that the fiery dots may come, but remember, we are children of the king, and those weapons will not prosper. I know that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. I will say boldly that he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I know that God shall give his angels charge over me. I know that because God has set his love upon me, he will deliver me. I know that when I call on the Lord, he will answer me. Do I have a witness this morning? Do I have a witness this morning? I'm going to keep on trusting in the Lord because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. I thank God. I said, I thank God. I thank God. Hallelujah for saving me. I'm going to keep on praying to the Lord because my steps are are ordered in his word I'm going to keep on praying to the Lord because bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me oh bless his holy name I'm going to keep on praying to the Lord because he is merciful and gracious and slow to anger we get angry and we just quit we think just throw in the towel but our God he is slow to anger I'm going to keep on praying to the Lord because when the doctor tells me that I have cancer I will tell him no 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 by God's stripes uh, I am healed uh, when the enemy tells you that you are nothing you will never be nothing you just tell the devil and say it with boldness you are a liar because I know that I am a child of the king and I am earning my way into the kingdom how many of you believe this morning that he can uh, and he will do it I said how many of you believe uh, this morning that he can and that he will do it come on church don't you want to trust the Lord this morning I said don't you want to trust uh, the Lord this morning some of us have been through a lot lady death bought divorces sickness COVID-19 depression then lost your jobs and now monkeypox is upon us uh, but you just have to hold on I said hold on uh, you don't I don't your boss don't the doctors don't but God does he is the one who holds all power in his hands he is the author and the finisher of our faith uh, hallelujah do I have a witness uh, you have to pray you have to trust you have to believe that God will work it out for you hallelujah and that he has uh, the last say so so just like the Nike commercial just do it so you just keep on praying keep on believing because God will answer your prayers uh, church we need to understand hallelujah I feel good right now I'm not going to conk out on you this time. I feel good, church. You see, we need to understand that sometimes the purpose of prayer is to get us out of circumstances. But more often than not, Deaconess uh, Andrea, the purpose of prayer is to get us through them also. Can I get an amen? I'm certainly not suggesting that we shouldn't pray deliverance prayers but there are times we need to pray prevailing prayers we need to ask God to give us the grace to sustain the strength to stand firm and the willpower to keep on keeping on brother Clint yes I do believe that sometimes we need to pray Deacon Henry, those get me out of the situation prayers. Uh, get me out of this uh, and get me out of that. Uh, but sometimes we need to pray those get me through prayers. Uh, 
Lord, if you just get me through this mess one more time, I promise you, Lord, that I've learned my lesson and I will not go back. However, sometimes we do go back and we hadn't learned our lesson. But what we gotta do, we gotta keep on praying and keep on believing that God will answer our prayers. I don't want to look at the uh, things of the past. I don't want to turn into a pillar of salt uh, like Lot's wife, uh, amen? Longing for things of the past. I want to continue looking ahead. I do want to press to the mark uh, for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I want to press. Uh, I want to press, Cynthia Ray. I want to press until I reach my goal uh, and know that my God is satisfied with me. Even if I have to crawl to the finish line, Deaconess Reynolds, uh, I'm going to continue pressing until I reach my goal. Do I have a witness this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are not quitters. God don't raise quitters. We are not going to throw in a towel. We are not the fat lady. We're not going to sing until the fat, throw in a towel until the fat lady sings. Oh no, we're not. We are not quitters. We are children of the Most High. Do I have a witness this morning? You see, church, uh, we need the spirit of discernment to know when to pray for what. If we're being completely honest this morning, most of our prayers have as their chief obje objective our own personal comfort rather than God's glory. We want to pray away every problem, but those short-sighted prayers would short-circuit God's per perfect plan for us. There are seasons and situations we need to simply pray it through. If you only believe, church, God will do just what he said he would do. Do I have a witness? Has God ever answered your prayers? Is there anyone in here where God has not answered your prayer? Do I have a witness where God answered your prayers? Hallelujah. 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 How many of you can testify that God will do just what he said he will do, but you have to hold on just a little while longer? Is there anyone in here, I said, where God has answered your prayers? When you thought you were down and out, your God was with you all the way. Hallelujah. Did God deliver you from something that was weighing you down? Is there anyone in here where God has healed your body? Is there anyone in here when you thought you were down and out, but my God, your God, pulled you out of the muck and the marry clay? But church, let me tell you, you must hold on until your change comes. I said, hold on, Deaconess Joe, Deacon Joe, until your change come. Church, don't you worry. Like I said before, the songwriter said, be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Church, even when your prayers now listen, isn't answered the way you want to, or when you want it. You should still have that peace that surpasses all understanding while you're waiting for your prayers to be answered. Church, you're going to have to go, hallelujah, into your prayer closet or wherever you pray. You must pray without ceasing and believing. And when you go in and come out knowing that God is working on your behalf. He is working on your prayer request. If only you believe and have that faith of a mustard seed and go on about your business knowing that God is getting ready to do something miraculous in your life. Do I have a witness? He is about to move that mountain that was in your way. He is about to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough for, to receive. Do I have a witness this morning? He is going to bless you with the things 
that you prayed for a long time ago and that you totally forgot all about it. You're going to be stunned and you're going to say, Lord, I totally forgot all about that prayer request. But I want you to know that if we had those 10,000 tongues, Lord, we can't thank you enough for, for answering our prayers. Oh, hallelujah. Do I have a witness? Now, on the other hand, I want you to understand that because we know that God heard our prayers and we didn't get what we asked for, it just means that the answer is no, N-O. And we must learn to praise God when the answer is what? N-O, no. Not just when the answer is what? Yes, Y-E-S. It simply means that we are asking for the wrong thing or for the wrong reason or just at the wrong time. Do I have a witness this morning? And I don't know about you, but I am convinced that the day will come when we thank God. Whoo, I know I have a witness for the prayers that he did not answer as much as the ones that he did because he had what? A better answer and a plan for your life. Do I have a witness? Whew. Church, aren't you glad that he did not answer some of the things you prayed for? We were emotional at the time. We weren't in our right frame of mind when we asked for those things. Oh, glory to be to God. Thank you for not answering those prayers, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Think about it. No telling where we would be if he had answered some of those prayers uh, while you were thinking in the moment and not in the long run. Uh, you were in it for the present and you weren't in it for the future. Aren't you glad that when you thought that he or she <laughs> was the right one, God didn't allow that relationship or that marriage to happen. Oh, hallelujah. Aren't you glad that the house you wanted so badly, someone else got it because you couldn't afford it anyways and you wouldn't have to live from paycheck to paycheck. Aren't you glad you didn't get the job you thought you were qualified for or you should have gotten but only to find out that they had abolished that position or you had to move out of the state. Hallelujah. My God, I know that I am because what a mighty God that we serve. Oh Lord, please, I ask you, I beg you, please keep interceding for me because we know not what we do. Oh, hallelujah. A lot of times we do not know what we do. I'm closing now. Hallelujah. But I want you to know that you must continue believing that God will answer your prayers if you only believe. Let me ask you this morning, how, can, how many of you believe that the carpenter that they call Jesus, the one that was born in Bethlehem in a manger, Mary's baby boy, the one that walked this earth, turning water into wine, healing the sick, restoring sight to the blind, and raising the dead. How many of you believe that the man who bled and died on the cross so that we could have a right to the tree of life. This is the same man who allowed the soldiers to beat him all the way up the hill called Golgotha and crucified our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on a rugged cross on Calvary on a Friday. They put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And they had the nerve to put him in a borrowed tomb. But guess what, church? I said, guess what, church? He did not say a mumbling word. And he just stayed there. Friday night, he stayed there Saturday morning, he stayed there Saturday noon and night. Uh, and guess what, church? 
It was just before the breaking of day while the dew was still on the roses. Oh, church, it was early. I said it was early. It was early. It was early Sunday morning when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ got up. And when he got up, he got up with all power in his hands. He got up with the power to make you walk right. He got up with the power to make you talk right. He had got up to, or with all power in his hands to make you talk right. But guess what, church? He had you got up with that Holy Ghost power. How many of you know that he got up? with that Holy Ghost power. Aren't you glad, church? Aren't you glad that you are saved this morning? I said, aren't you glad, Facebook and conference call, that you're saved this morning? If you, if you know that you're glad this morning, let's give God some praise. Let's give God some hand clap of praise. Stand up on your feet and let's give God some praise this morning. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? I say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Oh, church, keep on believing. Keep on believing because God will, uh, trust me, he will answer your prayers. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are now open. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are now open. We offer Christ to you, all my brothers and my sisters. We offer Christ to you, all my brothers and my sisters. Jesus paid the price on Calvary's cross over 2,000 years ago. There are three reasons why you need Jesus. One, because you have a past. Hallelujah. You can't go back, but he can. And two, because you need a friend. Jesus, who Jesus knows the worst about us. Yet he believes the best. Why? Because he sees you not as you are, but as you will be when he gets through with you. What a friend we have in Jesus. And three, because he holds the future. Who else, church, are you going to trust? I said, who else, church, are you going to trust? Man will turn on you, certainly, but not our God. Oh, hallelujah. In his hands, you are safe and secure today and for all eternity. If you like to begin a personal relationship with Jesus to today, please pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I believe you died for me and that your blood pays for my sins and provides me with the gift of eternal life. By faith, I receive that gift and I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. So now you're asking, now what? So what do I do now? Let someone know. If you've done this during the service, come down, join the call to discipleship, and we'll help you. If you did this at another time, where you were not around other believers in Christ, we ask that you contact a, a mature Christian that you really trust, or you can just give us a call at Purity Baptist Church. Our number is 202-397-4333. We want to enjoy the journey with you all. As pastor says, Sunday after Sunday, we are not a perfect church. We are not 
a perfect people, but we are striving to do the best that we can with God's will, amen, and God's help, amen. He holds our hand, just what the men said this morning, amen. So let's just give God a hand clap of praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is with him. Bless his holy name. We are closing out now, church. We want to say thank you for all of you who came into the sanctuary today. Thank you on Facebook and conference call. Thank you, men's the, the trio this morning. Amen. Give them a hand clap of praise. Then another one came along, so we had a quartet. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Carnell, on the drums, so faithful, and our mind ministry. Let's give everyone a hand clap of praise. So wherever you go, whatever you do, keep believing, and God will answer prayers. God be with you. Amen.